In April 1941, the Soviet Union decided to design and build a new heavy tank, which was the beginning of the later abandoned KV-4 heavy tank. This idea did not come out of nowhere, but was the result of both combat and intelligence. At that time, the Soviet Army summarized its experience in the Winter War and believed that the Soviet Army lacked a heavily armored tank that could withstand anti-tank weapons. This tank also needed to be equipped with a larger caliber gun and be able to serve as an assault gun, capable of both tank warfare and infantry support. Another concern for the Soviet Army was the information obtained by the intelligence department, which was that Germany was developing a heavy tank weighing about 90 tons, equipped with a 105mm main gun. If this information was true, it had to be taken seriously, because once such a tank appeared on the battlefield, even the KV-1 would be nothing more than a little kid bullied by it. Perhaps some people think this is just scaring themselves, but considering the international environment at that time, many countries in the 1930s had plans to develop super-heavy tanks. The Soviet Union in Germany had cooperated before and knew the technical strength Germany possessed. In addition, the German armored forces had already swept through the Allied forces in Western Europe. This concern was not unfounded, and no one dared to underestimate the opponent. According to the requirements, the KV-4 would have front armor thickness of 125 to 130 mm, with a focus on strengthening some vulnerable parts, such as the ammunition rack. The gun was required to be equipped with a ZIS-6 type 107 mm gun. There were not many other rigid requirements, allowing the designers to have a free hand. Many design departments participated in the bidding process, and according to statistics, there were about 20 different designs. They were derived from elongating the chassis of the KV-1 heavy tank, with weights ranging from 82.5 tons to 107.7 tons, and most of them chose a design with two turrets or two-stage guns. Unlike the KV-4 seen in games today, the design with two-stage guns was more popular at that time. The designers installed a howitzer in the front of the hull and another main gun in the turret, similar to the design of the B-1 and Churchill infantry tanks. The weapon configurations included a design with a 107mm gun mounted on the hull and a 76.2mm gun mounted in the turret, a design with a 107mm gun mounted in the turret and a 152mm howitzer mounted in the hull, and other designs with a double turret structure, with a 107mm gun mounted in the main turret and a 76.2mm gun or 45mm gun mounted in the secondary turret. For these various designs, they required a considerable number of crew members, as there were two large guns to operate, and some designs had guns with large calibers, requiring five to nine personnel. Regardless of how the tank design department operated, the main gun development department was very active in its involvement. Factory No. 92 had started designing new guns based on the F-39 as early as the autumn of that year. In the autumn of 1940, the F-42 Type 107mm gun was produced, and in early 1941, it was tested on the KV-2. The improved ZIS-6 tank gun was tested at the Leningrad Artillery Science Testing Ground in June 1941. The tank gun design progressed smoothly, and production had already begun in the autumn of that year to welcome the birth of the new tank. However, the chassis design was dragging behind which is understandable because the chassis of the KV-1 tank could not bear such weight. Even the KV-1 heavy tank itself had frequent mechanical failures, and even if it was widened and lengthened, it could not bear the weight increase of several tens of tons. It was precisely because of the problem with the chassis design that the KV-4 was abandoned shortly after and became a heavy tank, or many heavy tanks, that only existed on paper.